ladies and gentlemen we are back we're going to pick up where we left off on the uh episode five this is now episode six uh drilling the crane part two we're going to see if i can get through this thing without completely trashing the whole dang game um <laughs> it was it was quite a challenge last time man i mean it's just I don't know. I don't know how else to describe it. It was just absolutely challenging. I mean, everything that I tried to do just completely and totally fell apart. And uh, I don't know. Let's see. Um, I went ahead and, as I mentioned, I drove the Navistar over from the garage. I got that parked just north of uh, our uh, semi beat up Taiga here. I also, um, just because I was already there ish, I went ahead and picked up the Scout fuel trailer from the opposite side of the blue highway and I drug that across as well. It's a long boring slog. We're going to get to see that anyway when the Navstar makes its trip. I didn't want to bother you guys with that. Third, I didn't want to have to put you through watching me pick up four of these stupid drilling uh, spare part things. So, I've already picked up 3 of them. They're on the trailer. The trailer's facing the right way this time. I've only got one more to go. Let's get this thing going. Gosh, dang it. So tired of messing with it. All right. So, as I mentioned, uh, Taiga's a little beat up, but that's okay. Um, it's it's uh, mm, it's not horrible. We'll get through it. We'll get through it. Just up ahead, you'll see the Navistar parked on the side. Just behind that is going to be our fuel trailer, and behind that is our sideboard trailer. And all we have left is this one little tiny little box. Now, I'm going to be honest. I have already redone this video up to this point because I was going to have all four picked up and it just didn't it, it was long it was 13 minutes and, and oh my god it was just the same old thing over and over and over and over again so i went ahead and just stopped and said okay we'll pick it up from here save you guys the issue of having to sit through that whole boring mess just like we did on the last one we're going to activate our our anchors first um i don't know why it's not letting me get into crane mode that's a little crazy let's restore maybe that's a problem oh i know why her engines off. Okay. So, get in a crane mode. We're gonna push that boom out as far as it'll possibly go because we need to catch that box. We're gonna flip it over. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Where are you going there? Camera. All right, push that out as far as it'll go. Try to aim for the center, but doesn't look like we're gonna get there. So, we'll just connect. And then once we lift, the box is going to naturally just flip on over on its own. There we go. Now I'm going to cinch up this uh, winch by holding the L, no, R1, R1, R1 and the square. I will get it, I promise you. From here, we're just going to go ahead and lift and hope that thing don't flop on its own. We're gonna pull our left stick down. 12 o'clock, or not 12 o'clock, six o'clock is, is what I'm after, but it looks like I'm not quite gonna make that. You know what, at this point, even if I get it on the truck, I'm gonna consider that a victory, because, oh my God. Oh my God, cinch up, cinch up, cinch up, cinch up. I just need that little end. To lift just a little bit more. You know what? That's good enough. That's good enough. Circle to get out of that whole mess. Activate the anchor. Do not restore the crane. Park and brake off. And there we go. That looks good right there. Park and brake on because we don't need this thing rolling back down the stinking mountain again. Dump it on into crane mode, lift it on up. A little bit more. Then we're just going to boom it onto the trailer. Yeah, sure we are. Right. Can I rotate this thing? Can't rotate it, gotta lift it. There, now it's spinning free. Not a fan when that thing gets bobbling back and forth like that. 
perfect. Absolutely perfect drop. So, without getting too horribly excited, let's restore our crane, take our brake off. We have definitely got more than enough fuel, so I'm not even going to worry about refueling. Easy, Tiger. Easy, Tiger. Okay. Ooh, that looked like that was tipping for a minute. Oh, God. All right, back cargo for what I really hope is the last time. I really do. Now, as you can see, this is a five-slot trailer. We only need four boxes, so... Now, we just have to get it to the factory, man. While there are some humongous boulders in the way here, it, it's, uh, it's navigable. We can get around those things for the most part. There may be one or two that we hit and we have to kind of winch over the top of, but I think I should be okay getting this thing up to the factory. Now, when we're at the factory there is a task we have to get it's called local entertainment that is um a bit of a challenge in and of itself uh the the, the local guys apparently set up all these barrels um stacks of three in i believe five different places along this northern border area and your job is to go in there with some sort of truck one oh my goodness what is See, we got hung up on that big boy right there. Um, your job is to go in there with any kind of vehicle, scouts, typically. Wow, we are just getting hung up left and right, man. And knock those barrels over. And as long as you get all five knocked over, the game doesn't care one way or the other how you do it, just do it. Then you complete the task and you're over and done with. Now, what I have found is that uh, taking two scouts to the area uh, is best because inevitably you're going to knock three of the barrels over and heading into the fourth or the fifth third in the fifth third in the fifth in the route that i do it um you're going to flip and you're going to get stuck and there are literally no winch points uh and oh man does that make you really want to just punch a baby in the head. But, <laughs> why I said that. Um, once you get your scouts in there and, and uh, you, you get that thing knocked out, you're good. Don't do it again. Uh, it's a very challenging thing. Uh, I mean, unless you're, you know, kind of sick and you continually start your games over so that you get a solid playthrough. Wait a minute, that's me. No, unless you're uh, unless you're really really into that kind of thing, take two scouts. Trust me, you'll you'll thank me for that advice. Uh, and then after that, we've got to get the Navistar up here as well. So, well, I, after that, I say after that, after we drop off this load, we need to get the Navistar back. Now, this big, humongous behemoth right here in front of us is the reason we're bringing the Navistar up. And it's for a task called Not a Drill, which is already in our... I hate backing up here because the camera clashes are ridiculous. Um... You know what I mean? We need to pick up the or we need to activate that not a drill. It's already loaded. It's part of uh, the initial tasks that you get, but without having a decent enough vehicle to be able to pull that beast. Oh, thank God. <laughs> that is like a 10,000 pound weight off my chest right now. I mean, I knew I was going to get it done. I've gotten it done two, three, four other times before now. <sighs> so anyway, without having a decent-sized truck, semi, to be able to pull that thing, 
you're just not going to have any luck. Okay. So don't bother jumping on that one right away, I guess is what I'm trying to get to. Let's go ahead and we'll park this guy here for the time being. We'll go ahead and drag the Navistar over. Did I fuel that? I did fuel that up. So all we have to do is drive. Now, my one of my complaints about the Navistar is this exhaust. And I may have mentioned it before. Um, two episodes ago, something like that. I don't know. It's all blending at this point after making that run. Um, but the, the exhaust stacks on this thing they'll just blind you make it really tough to get the orientation on the front of the truck so this this may not be the truck to do this task with but I'm certainly going to try alright we got through some of the nasty rocks these Weirdly, do not seem to be affecting this truck whatsoever. Now, I do have the lift on it. Um, I can't get the highway tires on. I mean, I'm pretty sure you s I set this up in a playthrough uh, uh, before this one, S or this episode anyway. I know I set it up in a different playthrough. I don't know. Either way, this truck is uh, a little tough to keep an eye on. But it seemed to eat those rocks alive. That's kind of crazy. Oh my goodness. Okay, there's 12 damage. Good job. Way to go. You did great. Ugh. There's going to be more. There, there just is. There's. I say it a lot. But, oh god, yeah. See, there you go. I say it a lot, but uh, it's, it's the truth. In certain areas, in certain cases, in certain scenarios... There just is no other way around taking damage on a truck. And I got a little overzealous there. I probably I probably could have found a better way to not kill the truck, but you know, see there we go. Little bit of truck trivia for those who are interested or don't know. Um this particular type of semi is called a conventional. There are two types of, of uh, semis. You have this one with the nose on the front. Uh, it's a conventional, meaning the engine is in front of the cab of the truck. Let me just attach this trailer right fast. Uh, then you have a truck similar to the Azov, which is called a cab over. And a cab over is one where the cab or where Chuck is sitting uh, is directly over the engine. Hello, future me here again. Just want to clarify a couple of things. Um, the Eisenhower interstate system uh, is <laughs> what I should have said here. I, I came over the top of this simply because not what not not what I was saying, not because what I was saying was incorrect. It was correct to a point, but I wanted to clarify it a little better. So. In order to combat damage that was being done to the the highways in the United States in the 50s, uh, the Eisenhower administration created the Eisenhower Interstate System. I keep saying international. I, or I kept saying international. Uh, so I went over the top of it for that. Anyway, in order to combat the damage that was being done, the Eisenhower administration dictated that trucks could only be so long including the trailer. Um, so one of the big shifts from conventional to cab over was primarily because of that. Uh, with the cab over, you could continue with your longer trailer pulls and still have enough truck there to be able to pull all those things. So that was a big shift for the cab overs as well. And then what I go on to say here in a moment is true as well. Um, in those early days um, with cab overs, especially for uh, the long haul drivers you did have to climb through a window but I'll get into that here in just a second I just wanted to <laughs> I just wanted to clarify that cuz what I was saying was correct but it wasn't exact so 
what he found was these big trucks like this one uh, were just tearing up the road systems. So they wanted to find A, a more fuel efficient type of vehicle, and B, one that had a lot less weight. So they placed these massive weight restrictions on uh, the types of vehicles that could haul freight. And they pulled all the weight from the engine compartment, pushed it up underneath the cab, put a tiny little sleeper where the guy had to climb through a hole to get into the back where the sleeper is. This little box behind Chuck is a sleeper. I don't know if, oops, there we go. So that's a bed. You can see it's, you, it's attached. You just jump out of your chair, slip in the back and, and knock out, right? Um, you can haul cargo in there too if you want, but whatever. Primarily it's called the sleeper. So uh, those were pushed in a bit more and uh, the nose of the thing was cut off and boom, you get this flat faced square box on sitting on top of two wheels with an engine literally between uh, the driver and everything else. I guess I can't look down far enough. About where those cup holders are is where uh, the engine is. So, um, as time went on, those restrictions were lifted and the price of the cab overs were starting to skyrocket, whereas the price of the conventionals was dropping down, down, down. As those two things came into, con came into con uh, confluence, word, English, then, um, you started to see more and more of the conventionals showing up on the market, fewer and fewer of the, con of the cab overs showing up in the markets. Now, worldwide, it's not quite true. Europe still uses a lot of cab overs and still, um, in fact, Europe's cab overs are a lot smaller. They don't tend to have the sleepers either. Uh, long haul runners certainly do, guys that, you know, haul more than just where you would go in one day. Uh, this is more of a long haul kind of truck. You're in it for a day, two, three, four, sometimes when you're driving across the country, if not longer. And that's it. So anyway, long story short, I'm not trying to fill the video. It's just something I find interesting because of restrictions that were placed on vehicle gross weight and damage that was being done to the international or the interstate highways. The cab over was introduced to replace the conventional and as time went on, the conventional started now to replace cab over. There you go, now you know. Anyway, let me get out of this truck and quit wasting fuel. So we're gonna change, tr oh, I guess I'm not wasting any fuel with the engine software. Again, this is the, the uh, conventional kind of look. It's, you can see it's a smaller uh, body size altogether. I'm just whipping around so we can pick up uh, uh, local entertainment show the task, accept it, back on it. And I need to drive this guy back to our garage, sell off that trailer because at this stage we don't really have a need for it. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Okay, we are back. We've made the run from the northern section down, or the factory, getting down to the garage here. All I have left to do is get the trailer sold off and then get the crane off the back of this uh, Taiga, put it back the way it's supposed to be and repair it, because of course I've bounced into every tiny little thing and my brother on the way down the road. Um, I kind of put it into high and uh, crash. So sell that thing off. You can see there's our Azov waiting patiently to be useful. Again, cab over design. There is a sleeper in there, uh, but most of that is actually uh, the engine and the exhaust system in the back. So, whereas that thing has the engine primarily in in the in the back end, it's also got it over the cab. So, just harkening back to the previous educational point the more you know okay so let's change a few things on the back of this guy first off we don't need the uh, low saddle any longer so let's get back to our sideboard bed that should also get rid of the crane all in one shot which it did so now that we are beautiful and put back together again why don't we go ahead and tackle 
some of these more local things. Let's just take the one that's right in front of us. We'll go ahead and get into the trailer store. We're going to need to get the little sideboard trailer. There we are. We need metal beams and service parts. All of those can be had at the warehouse for memory purposes. We'll come out of the garage, go up the road. Uh, we'll take the camp road I mentioned earlier. Drive that along and boom, we are at the warehouse. Now from there, we need to deliver it to the rock slide. Let's just go ahead and get that task open and running. The rock slide is way the heck on down here. I am not going to subject you to all that driving. Um, so just hang tight. And we'll go ahead and get that taken care of, alright? See you at the warehouse. Okay, we are pulling... Oops, let me get out of high. We are pulling into the warehouse. We need to get the metal beams times one, service spare parts times one. That'll go ahead and clear out the rock slide for us. Uh, that should be awesome, I guess. No, I did need... I did need the trailer because the be metal beams are either going to take up the uh, whole bed or the whole trailer, one of the two. I think I'm going to put the beams in the bed of the truck and the service parts in the, in the back in the trailer. Just to get a little bit more weight on there. Concrete blocks, service spare parts. Those go to the trailer. And then we'll go to the metal beams. And there we go. Now, close, thank you. There we go. From here, we're going to follow that same path we did we took to get up to the top here. Come on down, come around the garage. We're going to... What are we going to do? We're going to come around the farm. Come the long way across the bridge, then take the main road on into town, through town, come all the way up to road rock slide. Okay. So I don't want to subject you to that drive again. Again, it's long, it's boring, it's crazy, and we've already done that road, certainly the main road at nauseum, and then this trip from the warehouse around. It's a long run to get to where we're going, but. I'll spare you that stuff, so we'll see you in a minute. All right, we are now officially back. We have pulled up to the fuel station just outside of town. Uh, I said it before, I'll say it again. Any chance you get to refuel, please do. Uh, especially now that we're heading into a game part of the game where it's going to be bam, bam, bam. Um, we are just going to be picking up task after task after task. Uh, Chuck may not even sleep any in the next few episodes, so uh, it behooves you to uh, fuel up whenever possible. Just don't leave yourself any position to be, to be running out of fuel, because uh, trust me, running clear across the map for a vehicle to refuel you is a pain in the back. And I have one come and pick you up because you fell over is a pain in the back too, as you saw. So. Moving on, we are just about to finish up Rock Slide. It is just around this turn. This is the watchtower in the middle of the swamp that we tackled a little bit ago. Let me... Jeez, not run into every tiny little thing, pal. That would be awesome. I'm going to go ahead and jam it up into high. get through this muck. This is serious mud through here, by the way. And the wish should this should take care of rock slide for us. There we go. 180 stars, $1,600. Let's see where we're at in terms of our progress. We have another 180 stars to go. So let's head over to the... Oops, let's shift it down into auto first. Let's head over to the trailer store. We'll sell this trailer off. And then I think what we're going to do is we're going to go and recover a drowned Chevy Kodiak. Now, we're not going to get a lot of use out of that truck. This may be another thing where I'm like the scout... Um, just don't do it, just don't do it, but, uh, 
I don't know. I, I just don't have a lot of use in, in the in the big Kodiak. I just don't. I think this Taiga is ten times the truck that that Kodiak is, and I need to figure out where we are. So, oh yeah, okay. There's two ways to get to the trailer store. Um, we could have turned right and had to do this big, huge U-turn, or we turn left here and we take a shorter U-turn to get down to there. Now, as we cruise around, and this is something that my wife reminded me of today when we were re-watching a video downstairs on the big TV. I tend to do that just to make sure that my audio levels are where they need to be, uh, that the screen doesn't get too out of whack. There isn't a whole lot I can do to help that. Some of it's just rendering on YouTube's part. Uh, but anyway, we were watching a video and my wife leans over and she says, Hey, did you see a wolf yet? I said, well, no, I, I haven't really been in areas where wolves show up, and I certainly haven't been driving at night. But now we're going to. So you don't get anything special for it. It's just one of those things. The wolves show up in the distance in your headlights at night, usually off one of the dirt roads, something like that. And uh, they're there, and then poof, poof, they're gone. So if we happen to capture one in the in the headlights... Oh, I want to... How did I do that? If we happen to capture one of the headlights, then by all means, I will go back through the video, add it in, uh, in a stop frame, the horribly blurry, blurry image of a uh, wolf, and then you guys will be able to see that too. You got to be quick on your toes. Uh, they, they do disappear uh, very quickly, very quickly. And... You know, it's just something cool. Like I say, you don't get anything for it. Uh, it's just, uh, just a little side thing the uh, developers threw in. I think it started out as sort of a myth uh, when the game first released. God, when was that? I want to say like June, maybe? Something like that of 2020? 2020 is blended, man. Everything seems the same anymore. But uh, I think it started off as like this urban myth. People didn't really believe the wolves existed. And then all of a sudden, all over, all over uh, the, the uh, internet, within days of the release of the game, the wolves started showing up. Uh, it took a bit for me to see my first one. I didn't actually see it for quite some time. We have this stuck trailer task, which we can pick up too. But what I really want to do is I want to get the Chevy Kodiak unstuck. The thing is, I kind of have to remember where it is. I believe it's here in this black. Which means we have to drive through some pretty nasty yuck to get there. So we'll turn there, go through Rockslide, which we just fixed. We do not take the blue highway, but we do have to wiggle, actually. Hmm. I believe it's right on, it, as a matter of fact, I know it's right off the end of, uh, it's like right here. It's like right here. completely on the opposite end of the world from where we need to be. Let's see. I'll tell you what we can do, though. Let's take a cut through the drilling site, through the town. We'll cut through the drilling site. And then uh, we'll kind of four-wheel this taiga. Because if, if you launch off the drilling site, I think we're going to end up right where we need to be. Plus, there, if nothing else, there's an upgrade relatively close to there that we need to go after as well. So... We'll just do a whip around. Now to get to the cut through the town shortcut I'm talking about here, we go through the town, obviously, and then we go to the lumber yard. And instead of making a right, oh my goodness, instead of making a right in the lumber yard, we're gonna make a left, sharp, sharp, sharp left. And then we will be able to cut across sort of a little land jut lack of a better way to put it and that allows us to drive right into the drilling site now the drilling site is going to be important when we get that big uh, Navistar run with the humongous trailer we were talking about at the beginning of this thing um, that drilling site is where we have to take that humongous trailer as well as other building material that uh, we pick up along the way so what am I doing good lord how about you get control of your truck there, pal? 
See, I fouled up. I meant to cut through the town, but I didn't because I got to talking about that stupid trailer. I hate when I to derail my own school of thought here. Because we're going to be doing some muck driving, let's go ahead and fuel up. Alright. And now, you should recognize this from the very first drive we made. This will take us by a watchtower, and then we can also end up right in front of the lumber yard, lumber mill. Oh boy, this tiger's a whole lot, or taiga, tiger, tiger. This taiga is a whole lot more steady going through this muck than that Chevy was. Boy, that Chevy was bouncing like crazy. Bouncing around like a crack-filled ferret. Quote, unquote, that's a direct quote. A movie called The Guild, or a uh, series, web series called The Guild. Okay, so here is our lumber mill. Normally we would go right to pick up some lumber, but because we're just going after a vehicle, we're not going to do that. We'll plow through here. You will see the road converge into this nasty mess. This is quite muddy, so I'm going to dive into the grass. That will help us get through this climb. There we go. Still not out of the woods yet. This is that little land jut I was telling you about. There's a little bitty creek that is part of the overall river. It just comes in and dumps and fills in the other side of our drilling site. We're going to stay on the grass here because this is a horrible mess. There was an upgrade there. I believe we already picked that up, so perhaps I have discussed this path before. May have. You want to be real careful of your tree stumps through here. They will eat you alive. And let's see, we need to be across that bridge. Looks like dawn is approaching. That's always good. It's way better to drive in the daytime than it is at night, but that also means our ability to see wolves has drastically diminished. They do not show up during the day. If they do, I swear I've never seen them, so... Take this around. This will be the first part of the nasty, yucky mess. If you continue to your right there, that will take you around and then up to the little mud bog where the gas station is. This takes us through a massive mud bog. this mess right here. Obviously the tiger is eating it. Now there is a down vehicle here. Let's take a look at the map. Back in here is an upgrade. So let's go ahead and try to weave our way through. Oh, this might have been the wrong direction. Actually, I think I can eat that tree up. I'll just knock that over. Maybe. Nope. Alright, maybe I can punch through this. Careful, careful, careful. Okay, we got through that. Alright, let me switch to chuck mode. That is the bridge we built off in the distance. If I can get the stupid trees on the way, there we go. Isn't that a beautiful sight? Let me get an idea where we are. So we need to veer to our left. And there's our upgrade. And frankly, I do not remember what this upgrade is for. I'm betting it's for a truck we have already sold off. I, let's see. Rather than guessing, let's just look at it. 
hey, it's the snow runner thing. That's what we needed to get anyway. So this is actually for a whole huge list of trucks. So our Scout 800, our Con Marshall, the Hummer, which is available in uh, Alaska, Chevy Apache. Again, found out that is actually part of an upgrade pack or a DLC pack. The Dawn, the TUZ, the Con, uh, those are all vehicles you find in Russia, as well as the R87. And then, uh, of course, our Chevy CK1500, our first truck, our original truck. So, high the list, we will definitely take that. And that was a good find. Now let's see if we can get that uh, big old Kodiak out of the woods. Got a little bit ballistic here. Looks like I'm going to live to not regret it, so that's good. Let's see. Got to get back on the road. There it is. Now this is going to go off to the right, and then it's going to be at this weird kind of angle, okay? And the truck's probably going to slide a little bit when we hit that weird angle. Not in this mud, um, but around this bend as it starts to make a climb upward. Uh, then it's going to take on a weird angle. You kind of want to take your time a little bit going through this. I have had the truck slide off, and I had, have had to winch, see it push off on its own. I've had to winch myself clear. Uh, the key is don't panic. Don't panic, don't panic, don't panic. I mean, you should panic anyway, it's just pixels, right? But it's funny how these games elicit that kind of fight or flight instinct in you, you know? You, you literally, you suffer <laughs> no loss except for time, you know? I don't know. Human instincts, they're crazy. You get, you get emotionally invested in this stuff. All right, so. We are just about to the crest of this one. We're going to make a left-hand turn. What I'm trying to do with this series, better than I did when I started the other one, ooh, good night, uh, is I don't want to be driving around aimlessly forever and just boring you guys to death. If the task involves driving over areas that are new or uh, better ways to do things, then I'm going to show you the drive. And this was sort of a new route, uh, so I figured I'd try it. Otherwise, I'm just going to cut the driving out like I just did, because there's no point in going over the same road over and over and over again. You'll do that as you're playing anyway. There's no need to have to watch that. This bridge eats my lunch. Bridges like it do as well, but we got through that one okay, so that's great. So as we come through this area, we're going to get another big mud patch. And then we have to be real careful of these. Don't go barreling through here thinking that you're going to be okay because there are tree stumps all over the place. So typically what I tell, or what I, well, what I told my wife was, go to the end of this first power line you see, and then just come all the way around it. Get into the roundabout, come over by the cat. Now this is a telehandler. Oh no, it's not. Yes, it is. It's a big, huge telehandler. But it's not the cat one. Well, certainly it's not the one that's, uh... Dang it, I was going to get a better view of that. Nope, truck's in the way. Alright, um... It's not the one that we can get through the DLC pack. I still want to figure out where that is. Let's pop this thing into high so we can blow through a little bitty mud climb. That should be good. And here, in the muck, buried quite a bit, is our Kodiak. It has no fuel, and its engine, I think, is screwed up. But we can recover it. Once we get a little fuel in there, anyway. We're back into the muck just a little bit. Just enough to be able to get back out again, okay? And we'll go ahead and attach our rear winch. Gives us a winching point right off the bat. 
and this big bad Russian beast is just gonna eat that mud for lunch. Come on, baby. There it goes. Didn't even have to shift. Love it. Absolutely love it. Now, before we get too deep in the muck here, let's go ahead and drag that Chevy over to us a little bit closer. There we go. Got plenty of fuel in the Taiga to get things going. I generally get it out of the way of these uh, tree stumps. What did I hit? Oh, I see. There was a down tree there, and uh, you just make it out. The Chevy ran right into that sucker. Oh god. I was afraid it was going to go right over the top of that tree stump. Alright, cool. So let's go ahead and do just a quick refuel. So our source is not the Chevy, because that's empty. If we are to, then it'll flip flop those around for us. Now again, we're just going to tap the X. That puts just a little bit of fuel in the Chevy. One more time. Now if we change vehicles, we'll jump in the Chevy. Now you can see off to... Where am I? Here. Right over my shoulder. All that's red and that boom, boom. That's that engine trying to turn over, but it's all screwed up. So we'll just go ahead and recover it. And we're going to retain it, and then we're just going to forget about it for a minute because we don't really have a use for it, you know. Flip back over to our Taiga. Taiga? However, I'll figure out how to say that. What am I doing? There we go. And we have recovered our Chevy. Big old Kodiak. So it's kind of a long drive to get here, but as I said, if it's a new route to take, or if you don't, if, if it illustrates how routes connect, then by all means, I'm gonna show you how that looks. But if we've gone over it five, six, seven times, you know, um, there's, I don't see the point in showing you that over and over and over and over and over again. So I'm just, I'm just not gonna, I'm just not gonna. I thought that might be a road. I was like, I don't remember going up that road. Good night. It's not, so I won't. So since we are here, let's get up to the asphalt so we don't sink in. Let's get an idea of what's around us. And then maybe we get things set up for the next run. We are not quite center of the map. That is a watchtower that I believe we have not acquired yet. Why don't we go ahead and do that because it's just around the corner. memory serves, the road to get there just shows up out of nowhere. I know we've gone all around it, but I know we, we have not driven to it yet. How did I drive past it? Good night. I've done it again. All right, turn around. No matter how well you know the map, you'll still get hosed up like I just did. Man, all of a sudden this eye started burning. The allergies were nuts. It was worse when we were on fire. The whole state was on fire at one point. I guess that is a, well, not the route I'm going currently, but there is a path. Again, watchtowers are probably something better served uh, by using a scout truck, but we got the Tega, we might as well use it. 
All right, 50 stars for that one. Let's see what the observation tells us. Bite my eye. I rub my eye. Nothing really new illustrated there. We already knew about everything that uh, this thing's trying to show us, so uh, that's good. We can continue up and over the rim and then down, back down to here. Now, this is King of the Hill as well as this point right here. This is the worst route of, the, of them all. As uh, I mentioned in a previous episode, that's the route that I had my wife take mistakenly. So let's uh, let's go around the mess here. You don't want you can climb that, but you don't really want to. And I'm hoping not to tip this whole thing over again. Oh God! Can we keep this angle? And there we go. Don't count chickens, but there we go. Oh, am I high centered? Got over it. Sweet. Hmm. And then this is a path you take to get up from the other side. And you catch the uh, watchtower in a mad rush on the way down. And that'll make you pucker. Because as you saw, that's pretty much straight, straight up and straight down. So let's see if we can get this last watchtower knocked out before we call it a day. Make sure that uh, I'm on the right path. Okay, so there is the road we need to click. Eh, get there. We need to be right there. That's why I'll miss it again and have to back up 20 times. I feel I have done enough to compromise my view in people's eyes over the last two videos, so <laughs> let's not add to that diminishing return. This isn't a horrible climb. Certainly not with the taiga. The taiga will kind of eat this thing up, so... But again, because of the narrow, oops, because of the narrowness, because of the, uh, e, because of the steep angle, it might, well, it is better to go in with a scout than it is a full truck like this, but we're here, let's just get it done. Let's just get it done. Now, I don't know if this is going to give us anything new either. We've pretty well covered the whole dang map at this point. Let's take a look. Any new things? Anything I haven't discovered yet? Nope. Okay, launch the observation. Let's get you a view of the valley. Okay, so that pretty much sets us up now. I know I have this habit of at the end of these videos, I said, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do this. And then I completely changed my mind. Two reasons for that. One, usually about 24 hours passes between the time I do these and uh, the time I actually sit down to, or by the time I finish one and then I start the next one. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's a big con contributor. Um, the other is, uh, I have this very short attention span. I, ooh, shiny, and then I'm off to something else, so. Let's see, what makes the most sense based on where we are? King of the Hill, because we're right in between those two points. And we would come up with a uh, scout to get that handled. Uh, Riverside Repair is so far out there. Stuck Trailer is so far out there. Missing Oil Tank is way out in the boonies. So maybe King of the Hill and try to tackle drainage and get some driving done. And then try to stack on one of these other two. Maybe Riverside Repair because it is so far out there and it's such a pain in the back to get down there. Get out again. And then we'll just condense it down like we did with this one. So I, th I think that might be the better way to go. Potentially. I don't know. We'll see. So 
Again, thank you for watching. If you've watched this far, I certainly appreciate it. I would very much appreciate it. Again, also, if you could drop a comment down below and maybe give her a thumbs up, put a lot of work into these things, and uh, it would just be nice to see that people are watching and, and enjoying. And, and even if you're not, let me know. It's fine. I'm a big boy. I'm 280 some pounds. I can certainly take it. Um, but like I say, with that, we are going to go ahead and end this video. If you have any questions, any concerns, check the Facebook link or drop a comment below or do both. Do both. That'd be great. If you want to even follow the page back on page and Facebook, that would be awesome too. I'm trying to get up to a hundred there. Um, right now we're sitting at 51 and we're kind of flatlined. So any kind of bump I can get with that would be great. Just click the link below. It'll take you there and just click the follow. You'll get notifications when I post new videos. Either way, uh, you'll also do the same thing if you click the bell and do the subscribe button. I'd appreciate a subscription on that as well. Um, but in the meantime, we got her done. We got it done. No more having to worry about those stupid drilling parts. Thank God. Thank God. Anyway, until the next one, I'm Rick with the Playthrough Channel. Thank you very much for watching, and you have a good rest of whatever it is for you.